Hello, good um, afternoon. Could you just update us on any injuries in the squad? I think we've got to come back soon. Um, yeah, Buffal is still not in the team training. Um, he has still um, some issues with his, some movements, so um, without in injection, still not uh, able to train with us. But it's getting better and better, and uh, I think there's a light on the end of the tunnel, so we can wait for him. Maybe he's also in the squad on the weekend. Maybe he can train tomorrow. We will try it again, and then we have a look. Um, Musa is out for the weekend. Uh, Musa has uh, problems with his hamstring. The risk is too big. He didn't train this week. Maybe next week he starts again. Uh, it was only a, a reduce of risk. We, we don't take the risk. Have a lot of games over Christmas, so uh, it's uh, important that he gets 100% fit. And then we have to have a few uh, ill players. Uh, Kevin Danzo was two days out now with with a, a little bit of fever, fiber, and and uh, yes, I think that's it so far. I forget something. No, yeah. uh, Jan Valery is lo out for longer. It's, uh, so I said it last week. Uh, that he will not play this year once again, so it takes time. And uh, yeah, maybe uh, yeah, maybe next next uh, year he's coming back. Now reports suggest that if you don't win this match, your job is under threat. But how do you see the situation? Um, I think uh, we have a big a big game uh, against an opponent that has uh, exactly the same points we have. And yeah, it's a, a away game. Uh, we showed up uh, this season in away games, and we I think made some really good performances. So we go there to to take something, and uh, we know about the importance of the game. Uh, we have 15 points in this part, uh, t uh, time of the season. If you if we take another three, then we are yeah, close to to uh, the clubs that are in front of us in the moment. It's important that you take three uh, points uh, every week, but if not, then it must be a performance. Then we say, OK, um, we have a chance to take the three points. And um, I think when I think about our last away games, uh, Newcastle, it was a really good game, but we didn't get something. There are still a few points in our game. Uh, they, we do it 70% of the time well. And uh, it's enough in the Premier League when you yeah, forget about these uh, things for a few minutes and that then the opponent uh, is so strong that he kills you. And this is the goal for, for the next game that we we really try to, to especially the, the defence game plan, uh, to focus uh, on it on yeah, the 90 minutes or if it's necessary, 100 minutes. Um, I heard that one of the uh, club's board members, Katharina Lieber, serenaded you at the Christmas party. So you seem to have a pretty good relationship with uh, your bosses. Yeah, it's, it's not, uh, it didn't change since the first day I'm here. And uh, this um, uh, relationship is important, I think, for, for working together, for developing a club and for yeah going through all the periods you, you go through in a, in a club, sometimes more successful, sometimes uh, more difficult. And uh, I think... We're a special club here, and uh, we have this relationship from the from the first day. And uh, I was very, yeah, I was, I was surprised that she does this. But uh, yeah, thanks. You good singer. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it seems that there was quite a few, I don't know, empty seats at the stadium in the last match, and quite a few fans left early. Did that surprise you? Uh, yeah, I think it's um, at home when you when you show up and when you create a lot of chances, they are there and they support you. But it's always on us to to do it. Eh? It's um, a little bit dif different to the away games. I think the fans are always very positive from the first moment and and support us in a, in, a, in a different way. I think the 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 difference between the home and the away fans uh, sometimes it's 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 a it's a, a f you could feel it, yeah. But uh, we really try to to give both the best we have and uh, to make them happy and to make them proud of us. And I know that we didn't do it that often in the last time. We had a few good games at home, but also a lot of not so good ones. And this is normal that then the 
yeah, the support is maybe not on the highest level, but if you want to be successful together, I think then it's also important to give the guys uh, uh, patience and uh, uh, credit for for uh, the hard work they do. You mentioned that sometimes the players switch off during the match, perhaps for 30% of the match they're not doing what they should be doing. Do you think mentally that the players are strong enough, resilient enough? <sighs> To get you out of the situation. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Because uh, I see them working every day. I see them uh, working on their uh, yeah weaknesses every day. And uh, this is what we what uh, what I expect uh, as a manager. I demand a lot, and um, they are following. And I think this is uh, um, when I when I see us playing now compared to uh, one month ago I think we not because of, we, we took more points in this last month but we are also more active and and uh, that doesn't mean that everything is is perfect but we had in the last game I was very disappointing after the game because I thought it was not good but when I saw the game once again I must say we were really fighting for these points we had in the second half two times hitting the bar in the post so we had big chances in this time in this game we didn't have the the luck to turn the table but we had chances and we we we, tr we stayed on our game plan for most of the time and um, it was uh, yeah a pity that we didn't take something but the performance was much better than I thought in the beginning. You managed just two shots on targets against uh, West Ham. Is it a fear, like a, a sense of fear of failure in the players perhaps that stops them from attacking to their No, quality? we had a lot of chances. We had more than only two. I think two times we hit the post and uh, Ingsi in that game was a little bit un unluckier than, than, than he was before because he scored nearly every game. And he feels very comfortable in the moment. He's really hard work, hard, working hard, and we have chances in every game. So this gives me a good signal. If we do, wouldn't have one, uh, then I would be more worrying about uh, getting good results. How important will the January transfer window be for you, Ralph? Yeah, absolutely important because we um, must see that we get on a few positions, uh, new players in. We know this. Um, the transfer window in the summer was not perfect for us. It is uh, absolutely clear that we, we, we have to do something on, on the fullback positions, even now when we are very long out. We have in the moment only Ryan Bertrand and, and uh, Cedric Suarez on these two positions and uh, a few Lange lights in behind. So this is definitely the position where we are looking for in the moment. And uh, uh, yeah, we will do something. Anything in attack as well? I think there we have uh, very much uh, options uh, with a lot of players there uh, waiting for their chances. Uh, and that was also the reason why we changed the shape, play now with more offensive players uh, than not with a back five anymore. Because I need to to, to give to get them on the pitch. We have quality there in front with, with Sofia on his feet. It's, the problem is that we had never that in the moment where we have all the players available we want to have. But uh, there's a lot of there are a lot of uh, Premier League teams. They don't have every time all the players uh, they want to have. So we're looking for the moment when we can take everybody on the pitch, and then we, I think we have enough quality to score. I think that's not our biggest problem. If you watch our games, I think we score nearly always. But uh, the defense is definitely something we must uh, improve, and we must maybe also uh, do something on the transfer market. Good luck for the weekend. Thanks a lot. Hello, you mentioned the um, the fever, the illness. Is that something that's affected any other members of the squad? Um, in a moment, you see the weather outside, wet, stormy, sometimes a little bit colder. So it's not a big coincidence that, that uh, somebody gets sick from time to time. Uh, you must, uh, yeah. Uh, let me tell you, when I see the number of my doctor on the phone, I know Okay, it's it's again one player, and and um, in this time of the year, that always can happen. So, are the provisions put in place to stop it from spreading? Because obviously, you don't want that to happen. Yeah, yeah, we do this. We we clean our hands every day, thousands of times, and uh, don't kiss each other. So it's <laughs> fantastic. Talking about January targets, have you made a list of target specific players that you've maybe discussed with the board? Yes, I think um, this is normal in every club. Uh, every club has his uh, team in, in behind uh, that is maybe an option for the future. On every position we have our list to, to, to bring players in. If you don't bring anyone in in January, if you don't manage to do it, have you got a squad that's strong enough to steer clear of danger? 
If we don't bring somebody in, then uh, we have to be strong enough uh, to stay in the league. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the reason is why we were looking for that. We have no alternatives in the moment. And uh, alternatives are important on every position because, you know, uh, we have a lot of games. If A Cup starts in January, um, also a competition, we want, we want to step a few rounds. So uh, it's important for us to 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 have a, a squad that is good balanced, but also on every position. I, I need to have alternatives. You played well in the second half against West Ham. You're making chances in games, as you've said. Why do you think you haven't got the wins that you've needed this season? Um, yeah, this game, why we didn't win? I think it was clear. We had <laughs> Ingsi twice on the post and. Um, another few chances where we missed the target um, or the goalkeeper make a good save. I think in general our clean sheets uh, are not that much uh, that it should be and uh, it's difficult in the Premier League but exactly this is something of a behaviour to defend the box, to defend our own goal that we do not do with the same intensity that sometimes maybe... Uh, attack or go in the box or running in front but the way back is the more important one the recovery run is the more important one and the duel in, around our own box is the more important duel than the duel in the offensive in the opposition half so this is definitely something that we when we do it when we act together when we are working together then it looks good if we forget about our behaviors if we save this run back then it doesn't look good and this is a behavior we cannot we cannot accept, and uh, I think we we must uh, yeah demand them uh, these runs, and and we do this. Is it just about making sure your players are confident enough to do the things you want them to do on the pitch? Are they confident enough? Yeah, I think they are confident because they feel that it works when we do it, and uh, I think this is the most important thing. But uh, the 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 quality to do it 90 minutes and. Uh, Sometimes when it's not perfect, even then uh, you you win your one against one duels because nobody helps in that moment. I think these are the moments where you win or lose games, and and there we must be stronger. We must be more aggressive and uh, uh, more convinced that that we can defend like this. Was Nathan Redmond all right at half time at the weekend? Obviously, he got taken off at half time. How did he react to that? How a player should react uh, in the form of. Um, having a good week, good sessions, more energetic and uh, uh, as I as I always say, not talk to the manager after getting, getting substituted, show up on the training pitch, that's the best answer you can give and he did. Just, just finally on, on Aston Villa, what, what, what do you think of their team, Jack Grealish is a player who stands out, what challenges are you going to face? <laughs> Yes, I think it's a, a team, a, a big squad. Uh, they played uh, during the week with a whole different group and they were very successful. So you, you see they have also quality uh, in, the, in the second line if you want. But uh, this is a, a strong team at home. They had a few good results. But sometimes there's the same problems we have, conceding too many goals, uh, the tight games not putting on their side. So it would be an interesting game for us. And we go there with 100% uh, 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 um, focus on, on getting the win and uh, being brave like we always are when we play away. And uh, yeah, finally... After uh, a good start, we had very often a way uh, keeping uh, the points with us and uh, make make with the second or the third goal. This is the goal what we have we have, and we we go there with a lot of uh, self confidence. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Well, in that section, uh, move on to the one for ten thirty. Right. Hi. Uh, if I could just take it back to January, you said you'd come up with a list. Have you had assurances from the board that there will be funds available, or are you looking at loan players? Both is interesting for us. It depends what uh, options we have. Um, I think the more important thing is that the player helps us immediately uh, because in the winter, uh, at winter transfer, maybe there are two different transfers. One is uh, a young player you can build up when you're in a position and then in the summer when the new season starts, he's in the, the, the shape that you can use him and, 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 and let him play from the beginning. This is one thing. I think we are not in this mood that we can do like this. So when we t try to get somebody in, then he maybe should has help us immediately. And this is not so easy, especially uh, who wants to 
to sell his best players in winter. Uh, but um, yeah, we must try it, and uh, it costs a little bit of money. Yes, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, it's it's important for us. So you've been told that money is available if you do find the right player. Let us let us see. I think uh, we have our opportunities and uh, our chances, and uh, we will we will if if we find a package that fits perfect to us, then we have to do it. Has it been, uh, was it something easy to come to terms with? Because I know you always spoke about finding a rough diamond and then polishing it. Um, so would you look to more experience this time round than they can come in and sort of firefight? No, that's not the that's not one hundred percent the the target. I think uh, if we would have. A young player that uh, is in interesting in this position, our academy, we would let even get a chance to play there. In the moment, we don't have so many players on this position, so we we look for 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 somebody who brings up. But it also can be a younger player with a lot of experience because there are a lot of players around there. They just played on the highest level, even Champions League or somewhere else, and then yeah. It's, it is also interesting for for coming. The good thing on the Premier League, or if you're a club of the Premier League, everybody wants to come to the Premier League, and this is this is the big, uh, the positive thing. The negative thing is that the salary cap for asking as a Premier League club is a high one. Hmm? You mentioned they want to come to a Premier League club. Is it harder to sell a club fighting against relegation, or is that opportunity still good enough for them? I cannot say that uh, games against. Um, uh, relegate, relegating fighting clubs uh, are easier than against the top six in the league. So, it's, as I always say, Premier League games are interesting, they are tough, they are very tight always, and uh, the march, uh, the difference of winning and losing is a, is a very, very s uh, small one. And uh, to get this on our side, you have to invest a lot, and we, we, we will do it. At a similar point, uh, last season you set your team a target of eight wins that you thought would see them stay in the league. Have you got a target in mind this time round? Or? It depends how much or how many draws you make. Eh? Um, we have now four wins. Uh, that's more, much more than last season to this time. But yeah, we speak about the 40 points. We have 15 now. We have two games to go in this first half of the season. and. And uh, still the chance to come over the 20, and that's the target we have in the moment. But don't let us look too far ahead. Eh? I'm sure that we will have a fight until the end of the season, like last season. Yeah, the, the, the Premier League in this area is so close that teams are good, and but not not so much different between them. Some strange results will happen, and I, I'm sure that we also get some good wins where nobody expects us to, to to get a win. So uh, it's more for, more important, uh, and it's better to use more energy on on things we can really change in our game than to look on the table or or try to 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 yeah. Mathematic here, it's not, not not the way we want to do it. I came in and spoke to Ryan Bertrand earlier in the week and he mentioned that Villa are having a, obviously a difficult one at the moment, but because they're a newly promoted team, no one's really looking at that. And whereas everything at Saints is magnified because obviously you're over league before. Is that something that you'd share, that you feel the same way? <sighs> I think the focus is on every team in the Premier League. Uh, when you are in the relegation zone, then everybody knows that's a fight for, yeah, staying in the league and uh, I think like last season some clubs have maybe more a little bit more points than we have but they still know that the way to the end is a long one and uh, we know from the f third or fourth day game day that we we have this season um, a, a hard fight again to stay in the league and uh, we get used to it and it doesn't mean that we like it we would also like to to make a, s a further step earlier that gives you a little bit more confidence, but uh, uh, no problem. We 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 don't work different if we have more points or less points. We always try to give everything we have, and uh, this is, I think, the only the only way you can go. And, uh, just a couple more from me. Matt Target obviously left Saints in the summer to go to Villa. You mentioned that you want to get new fullbacks. Is there a little bit of regret in letting him go, or do you still stand by that decision? Uh, still stand by that position because we had a few other options in the summer. Uh, finally, we couldn't realize them. Uh, when you want, if you want, this was our Musa Cenepo we got. So, yeah, it, Musa brought us a few points so far, uh, and uh, uh, Matt was uh, the backup for Ryan. So I think we 
if if I have known that I don't get anybody in, I wouldn't let him go. Although then I couldn't bring bring Musa in, so it's it's always a little bit difficult to if you if you only can buy players if you sell one, then you have to yeah to choose what is the best and what is what is what really helps us. Yeah. Disappointed there's no one uh, coming through. I know you spoke about Jake Bokins in the summer, but he's not really made the squad all that often. So is there, is, how's his progress? I think he's working with us and he's training with us and he is uh, a good lad, uh, but still not uh, far enough in his development, I think, to, to play in the Premier League. And uh, the moment will come. Oh. Hi, Rob. I'd like to get your thoughts about Josh Sims, who's returned from New York Red Bulls. How's he the kind of person to? Yeah, Josh had a, a good a good time in in in, in New York, um, with a club that is yeah um, based on on Red Bull football. So it was easy for him to go there because he knew all the vocabularies, all the behaviors, all the habits he has to have. Uh, it was very easy for him. He said it was that's why he enjoyed it a lot because he went there and immediately had a good step in the in the game and and it was f he really liked it he's back now and um, um, we have not finally decided what what w uh, we will do with him on this position we have a lot of uh, yeah options uh, in our team with Nathan with Musa with Sofian with Stewie Armstrong so we have a lot of players who can play there so it's not easy for him to to play in our team in the moment but we haven't decided yet. We will do it after after January, uh, after the first January. So the intention is to see his match fitness and then whether or not he can go out and run again, or is it? We haven't decided so far. Uh, we'd like to talk about your defence a little bit more. Uh, I previously you talked about clean sheets and cross, the amount of crosses directly. Let me have a quick finish when you want to talk about the clean sheets. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take long, okay? <laughs> no clean sheets now in 12 games. Okay. Defence has got better since going back to the back four, which you mentioned last week, and also moving Jack Stevens into the centre backs. What do you think he brings to your defence? If you if you say the difference is to the nine zero nine, uh, then it's the right. Uh, the results were better now, but um, Jack uh, was uh, important. Uh, yeah, a new player for us in the, in that moment where we need a little bit more mentality, and he really fighted for this. The first game he made against Man City away, the first two games, and he did a good job there. Then we switched to a back four, and he was uh, he deserved to play there. Um, still, with him, I'm not 100% happy because he has good moments in the game where he's really, uh, especially with the ball, has very good options. He's a, a f fantastic football player. And sometimes in the duels, like in the last game, he was not strong enough. And I also am critical with him in that part. Like everybody has his weaknesses and he must uh, work on this. And uh, But I think the, the whole baggage uh, with his mentality and his, his uh, yeah, winning mentality, I think is, helps us. And, and uh, hopefully his, his performance is getting better and better every day. The first time you brought up the Leicester game before we did. So yeah, this. that's right. <laughs> One thing also on to is your positioning of your defence. So they can be quite deep when or out of possession, but they push up as part of this team threat. When you talked earlier about how your defence needs to work on their intensity in front of the penalty area, how do you go about doing that when you want your team to press to high up the pitch? Yeah, we the rest defence when we press high off the pitch is is a very important one, and um, this is something we. Uh, always working in. I haven't seen so many counter that goals we conceded in the last time. So the rest defense was in the back five, not as good as it is now in the back four. This is a little bit strange, but it is. Uh, maybe you have more responsibility for your own job than waiting for the others to come. And uh, I think this was a big fear in the beginning to think okay now we have one man less in behind uh, so we get a little bit more problems when we lose the ball but it wasn't really a problem of counter attacks the last goal we conceded against Everton was more a, a, a following of mistakes not sliding enough not doubling up in the wide areas not closing from the front after uh, yeah or getting in the box back in the box from the front and this all together yeah, ends up in a, in a conceded goal and uh, we must be clear that if we, if we have so many mistakes 
following in a row that uh, in the Premier League the chance uh, for the opponent uh, to score, they will take it. Everton, to bring back it, the first goal they scored there was from a corner delivered to the back post, then the second goal was from a CDV cross delivered to the back post again. Talk to you about this second post defence previously. Um, yes. I think we played uh, in a back five against Everton. It was the last game, and then we changed it. And uh, it's it's a behaviour for for the for the fullbacks to to be there to to defend the second post, and also sometimes for the number ten to make a long 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 recovery run. Um, and uh, this is uh, a part of of yeah doing my job also in the defence. And this was is exactly what I said before. These runs are sometimes more important. Then the one against one dual run in front to to maybe create a chance because this maybe can save few points because uh, conceding a goal is is the worst you can get. West Ham directed a free kick in from the first two minutes in last week that was a goal that was disallowed from side. Um, <laughs> may I ask how is your approach to defending set pieces? Are you zonal? Are you mixed right now? Uh, as you see in the uh, defending of the wide free kicks, we use. Uh, the zonal defend, uh, that's not really necessary and not very good, I think, if you are man-marked in that situation. Nearly no team does it so far. And um, uh, it works quite well so far, also with the offside. So let us keep doing this. Uh, I think uh, in the moment we, we score more goals from set pieces than conceding one. Don't listen to ex to exact what I say here, Yeah. so let it let it be like this. It's always a little bit also, you need the luck in the right moment, but also the intensity and the training is hard. And I think, uh, yeah, this is not the worst part of our game.